The Vegas Golden Knights have announced today that they have fired Pete DeBoer. And probably like everyone else is thinking, yes, this does seem like a very odd time for them to fire him. Just because, you know, they didn't do it right at the end of the season. They waited a couple weeks after the season. GM Kelly McCrimmon said that after the last two weeks of lengthy discussions with Pete DeBoer, he felt that a new coach was needed. So I'm not sure what DeBoer would have said throughout the last two weeks that made him think that. I know a lot of Vegas fans wanted Pete DeBoer to get fired, but for me, Vegas has officially become a franchise that throws the coach under the bus right away. As soon as something goes the slightest bit wrong, they gotta get rid of the coach. We saw it with Gerard Gallant a couple of years ago back in January of 2020. Now, just over two years later, we're seeing it with Pete DeBoer. And well, it was a big disappointment for Vegas to miss the playoffs for the first time in their history. You have to take into consideration that they had a ton of injuries. I don't really know if you can blame this on Pete DeBoer. Yeah, there are some games towards the end of the season that Vegas probably should have won, and they didn't. That ultimately hurt them in their hopes of getting into the playoffs. Uh, but Pete DeBoer, I don't know, how long is he going to be out of work now? I mean... This is a guy that I don't have as much faith in, uh, you know, getting a job as quickly as I did in Barry Trotz. And speaking of Barry Trotz, maybe this is why Vegas let DeBoer go. Um, you know, they looked at a guy like Trotz who's available on the market now, and they thought, you know, it's too good to pass up. But if you're Barry Trotz, do you want to come to an organization that as soon as things go the slightest bit wrong, they always look to the coach as the problem right away. I don't know. And Kelly McCrimmon also went on to say that the team got away from never giving up and never giving in, and it was tough with all the changes to do that. I'm paraphrasing now, of course. So if you're going to say something like that, you know, obviously when he says all the changes, he means all the players coming in and out of the lineup and so on. When you say something like that, obviously you're alluding to the injuries. So why is it Pete DeBoer's fault? I mean, now they had discussions over the last two weeks, like he said, and maybe there was something there, you know, philosophical differences between coach and GM. And if you're Kelly McCrimmon now, I mean, you're kind of on the clock here because your job can't be that safe either. You've already fired two coaches, Glant and DeBoer. And how many, you know, coaches does a GM get to fire before he's fired finally? So we'll have to see what, what happens there with Kelly McCrimmon. Um, it's going to be very interesting. I don't know, Vegas, they just seem to get rid of coaches right away, and now are they going to finally look to the GM? And now moving on to some better news. Lane Lambert was hired by the New York Islanders to be their head coach. Well, more of a promotion than a hire, considering he was their assistant coach for the last four years. And Lane Lambert, as some of you might know, has been good friends with Barry Trotz for a long time now. Those two go way back together, like we're talking about Barry Trotz's days in Nashville. And Lane Lambert said that he let Barry Trotz know that he got the job as the head coach of the New York Islanders. Barry Trotz was thrilled for him, so that's nice to see after Trotz was unfortunately let go uh, just one week back. So Trotz obviously happy for his friend. He's probably going to be coaching against him somewhere next year, you'd have to think. But it's interesting to see what Lane Lambert can do with the Islanders. This is the 57-year-old's first time as a head coach. He's been an assistant coach for a while now in the NHL for the last 10 years. So now as a head coach, is he going to change a lot from what Barry Trotz did with the Islanders? Is he going to change that notorious system that they play? Or is he, you know, going to keep it pretty much the same? Is he going to, uh, you know, does he have kind of the same coaching philosophies as Barry Trotz? You know, when guys are usually good friends and stuff, they kind of, think the same for the most part on coaching philosophies, at least it seems that way anyways. Please let me know what you all think in the comment section below. Also, please like and subscribe and share this video. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll talk to you again soon.